We are now 158 days away from the official release of Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker that is all set and ready to end the sequel trilogy and the Skywalker saga itself. This is Mike Zero, make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel for future Star Wars content. Now, one exciting aspect of Episode 9 is that we do know that this film is going to explore many different elements of Supreme Leader Snoke's backstory, as well as other elements of some of the prequel trilogy characters, as well as the legacy characters in general, that's going to be used as a way in order to really evolve the characters of Rey and Kylo Ren in this story. Now, these past couple of weeks or so, we've been learning a whole lot more about this film, and when it all comes down to one of the concept art descriptions, this is where things begin to get very exciting for episode 9. Now specifically, what's really intriguing about all of this is that a description of Kylo Ren and his Knights of Ren traveling into an abandoned headquarters of the First Order, which it's described that Kylo and his Knights eventually reach Snoke's original throne room that leads to Snoke's vault full of secrets from the past. It's explained that eventually Kylo discovers a hologram of Snoke that is activated by Kylo where Snoke begins to talk about Anakin Skywalker. It's said that Snoke begins to explain in the hologram that Snoke had once mentally connected with Anakin just before his turn to the dark side, where it said that Snoke was once sensed by Anakin during his travels to one of the dark shrines in the Outer Rim, some months before Anakin turned to the dark side in Episode 3. Additionally, it said that Anakin sensed Snoke's presence and saw it as the mysterious Sith Lord that they had been searching for, which was Palpatine, yet it's described that Snoke was able to manipulate his energy and hide his presence in order to indirectly guide Anakin in a specific path and that Snoke was studying how Palpatine was manipulating Anakin from the very start. So let's go over a couple of parts about this. Now, we do know that Supreme Leader Snoke is roughly 800 years old. Very old as a character, probably one of the more older villains that we have seen in the Star Wars franchise based within this large saga. So you can really see how J.J. Abrams is really trying to connect all of the characters from the prequels, the originals, and now the sequels to really truly make this the culmination of the Skywalker saga. Now what I also like about this is that this actually tells us that Snoke was able to manipulate his energy and his presence to Anakin when he mentally connected with Skywalker during Skywalker's travels to one of the Dark Shrines. Now, we're not quite sure exactly what this Dark Shrine really was, but Anakin was actually said to have once traveled there some months before the turn of Anakin Skywalker to the Dark Side during the events of Episode 3. Now, the Dark Shrine is actually said to be based over in the Outer Rim, where Snoke mentally connected with Anakin and was watching over the whole entire event of Palpatine manipulating Kylo Ren, or should I say Anakin Skywalker, from the very start and from the very beginning. So you can see how Snoke, though he wasn't necessarily a puppet master per se, he was watching over everything that was ha happening, almost like the Wills. You guys may or may not know about the Wills, but they are these godlike beings that watch over all the events that take place within the Skywalker saga. It almost reminds me of something like that where Snoke was watching over Palpatine, manipulating Kylo or manipulating Anakin Skywalker from the very start. So with that being said, all right, the whole entire sequence where Kylo Ren and the Knights of Ren discover the Snoke hologram. Now this Snoke hologram is said to offer a lot of secrets to Kylo Ren, indirectly of course, because Snoke is already dead. <clears throat> and with that being said, we also know that this movie is going to offer a lot of secrets to Snoke's backstory, as well as the origins of the First Order. Now, that was all confirmed by Vanity Fair a couple of months ago, thankfully. Uh, the fact that we will be learning more about the First Order and its backstory, as well as Snoke's background in Episode 9, is rather interesting, I gotta say, because if you look at The Last Jedi and The Force Awakens, we really know little to nothing about Snoke, and that's gonna really be explained in greater depth in, the, in the, of course, The Rise of Skywalker. Now, this whole entire secret between both Snoke and Anakin and how Snoke had once mentally connected with Anakin in a very similar to in a very similar way to when Snoke connected with Luke Skywalker you know, well before the events of the sequel trilogy. You guys may have learned this in the Last Jedi novelization. It alludes to that, that, of course, Snoke was able to mentally connect with Luke himself while they were both simultaneously searching for the truth of the Force. Very interesting side of Star Wars when it comes to the Force lore and what J.J. Abrams is really willing to explain in The Rise of Skywalker. 
So what do I think about this? The fact that Snoke is able to manipulate his presence and of course his energy in general. It's one of the main reasons also as to why Snoke is able to really track down Palpatine and saw you know, of course, you know, Palpatine being the actual Sith Lord, Lord Sidious, by use of his own ring. There's something with his ring that actually made him able to sense that Palpatine was really Lord Sidious himself. So this movie has a lot going for it, of course. You know, it does have a lot of revelations like this and different twists and turns that are really going to make us view the past eight Star Wars movies in a different light. Anyways, guys, drop a comment below. Let me know what you think about all of this in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the comments, content for today. Do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support and I'll catch you guys next time.